Hey, what's up you guys? I just want to take some time to talk to the sound geeks out there. And if you're a sound geek like me, this is for you. And so, I've just been thinking a lot about music and how music has really changed and progressed over the years, over the decades. And so, um, it's really interesting because, you know, music, as we all know, you know, has the ability to make us feel good, make us feel better about ourselves and about life, you know. Um, just the feeling of listening to a song, you know, whenever we're having, whenever I'm having like a hard day, whether it's in a workplace or any place or at home, with the family dealing with all kinds of crazy shenanigans and all kinds of crazy stuff to the point where you just want to go crazy yourself, you know, um, the feeling of listening to a song, you know, it's, it's indescribable, you know, it makes you feel good. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel better about myself. It makes me, you know, hopeful, you know, whenever I'm listening to a song or playing a song, you know, whether I'm sitting down at my keyboard or a piano, and I just feel like playing, you know, um, this, this feeling just overtakes me. It's just hard to explain, you know, it's a, it's therapeutic, you know, it's really therapeutic, you know, whenever I'm listening or playing, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And so I started to learn about tuning frequencies and how I got into tuning frequencies was listening to, I, rem I remember purchasing a gospel album from one of my favorite gospel artists by the name of Donald Lawrence and his group called the Tri-City Singers. And the album was entitled Goshen. And I remember the single that Donald and Tri-City dropped before the album was released um, was called Goshen 432 Hertz. And I thought to myself, 432 Hertz, what is that? And I, I remember listening to an interview that Donald did as he talked about, you know, the single Goshen 432 Hertz and the album that was coming up. And he, and he said that the whole album was going to be tuned at 432 Hertz. And he expounded on that. He expanded on the subject of Hertz. And he said that Hertz is a tuning frequency. And I thought to myself, that sounds interesting because I never really thought about that, you know, because whenever I sat down at my keyboard, you know, it was already, you know, preset of the tuning is already set up and everything. And so I definitely don't have to worry about the tuning, you know, versus playing a piano, you know, because the tuning is already set on a keyboard, you know, and so I'm good to go. Whereas on a piano, you know, tuning is definitely a big deal, you know, um, even for other acoustic instruments as well, you know, as far as guitar, nylon guitar, acoustic guitar, you know, um, violins, violas, um, cellos, etc., etc. You know, when it comes to acoustic instruments, you know, tuning is a big deal, you know, when it comes to that, you know. And so I started to really learn about, you know, this tuning frequency, all these different tuning frequencies. And doing research, um, even with, you know, the music I listened to from back in the day, back in the 90s, back in the 80s, back in the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, you know. And um, I learned that back in those days, back in those times, that music was tuned differently than what it is today here in the States. Because today's music is tuned around 440 hertz. But back in, but back in the day, back in the 90s, back in the 80s, back in the 70s, back in the 60s, back in the 50s, back in the 40s, and blah, 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 and all that stuff, you know. Back in those days... Music was tuned differently than it is now, you know. To give you a few examples, um, there's a movie that was released around 1995 called Babe. And it's one of my favorite movies growing up as a child. And so um, the gentleman who did the, um, who did the score for the movie, who composed all the music for the movie, was a gentleman by the name of Nigel Westlake. And I... Even watching the movie today, you know, I I knew that the music was tuned differently, that the tuning frequency for all the music in that movie was tuned differently. You know, there's one song called If I Had Words, and I remember growing up as a kid, I remember trying to pick it out on my little Casio keyboard, that song in particular, and I thought to myself, you know, listening to that song when I was a kid, I thought to myself, Hmm, that song was either written in either F sharp or G major. It, it was one of the two, you know. It took some time for me to really figure it out when I was a kid. And I thought to myself, the more I listened, the more I started to understand. 
aha, it was in F sharp. It was written in F sharp. And you know, this was look, this is looking at it as an adult now, you know. And so I'm looking at it as an adult. I'm watching a movie as an adult. And I understand that the tuning frequency was totally different. And that's what I knew. I, I said to myself, you know, that song was written in F sharp, but it kind of... It kind of doesn't sound like F sharp, even though it is. It's just the tuning that was different. It had to be tuned around, you know, it had to be tuned up like 15 times around like 455 hertz, you know, or 450, you know. But it was higher. It was higher, you know. It, you know, it was F sharp, but the tuning frequency was like 15 steps higher, you know. And so that's what it was. It was the tuning frequency, you know. Another example, you know, um... There's a PBS show called Shining Time Station that I used to watch when I was a kid. One of my favorite shows growing up as a kid. And the theme song, Shining Time Station, that Kevin Roth sang and Joe Raposo wrote, um, it took some time for me to really try to make out what key that song was written in. Because that song in particular, the theme song for Shining Time Station, had a folksy kind of feel to it. It was folksy, it had guitars, it had piano, um... It was, it had a folksy kind of country kind of feel to it. And I thought to myself, you know, all the country songs that I heard, you know, I never heard a country song written in C sharp or F sharp or A flat. You know, I never heard a country song written in those keys in particular. I heard country songs written in the key of C, written in the key of D, written in the key of E, F, G, A, you know, in those keys. But... That song in particular, the Shining Time Station theme song, I thought to myself, you know, the more I thought, and I remember picking that song out on the keyboard when I was a kid, and I thought to myself, you know, was that song written in the key of C sharp or C major? And listening to it now as an adult, I started to understand that that song was written in the key of C major because it's a folk song. It's, it's sung folk style country style, you know, and so that's when I started to realize that the tuning frequency back in the day, back in the early 90s, was tuned differently. It wasn't tuned at 440 hertz back in back in the day, you know, some, 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 some of our music was and some wasn't, you know, um, particularly back in the early 90s and even back in the 80s with pop music, you know, um, Michael Jackson, um, some songs that he did, you know, like The Way You Make Me Feel and Leave Me Alone, you know, The Way You Make Me Feel written in the key of E natural, you know, and, you know, how the tuning frequency on that song was totally different, totally different. That and the song Leave Me Alone, which was written in the key of E flat minor, E flat minor, you know, and... That's when I started to realize that the tuning frequency for those songs in particular was completely different. It was totally different. And so that's when I started to realize that. And so I just, the more, the more I done research on that kind of stuff, the more I started to learn, you know, about all these different tuning frequencies, you know. And um, it was really interesting because, you know, um, because there's been a lot of, you know, debates, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, arguments among people, among other musicians, among music lovers about, you know, songs being written in a certain key, you know, whether it's a television theme song or, or, or a song from back in the day. You know, there's been a lot of debates on whether this particular song was written in the key of C or C sharp, you know, and it's all because of the tuning frequency, you know, and those arguments still go on still to this day, you know. And, you know, it's the tuning frequency because the tuning frequency is back in the day, um, years ago and decades ago, was totally different than what it is now here in the States in particular, you know. Different parts of the world, um, music in different parts of the world is tuned differently. And so way different than ours, you know, so our music these days is tuned around 440. And some different parts of the world are tuned differently, you know. And um, and I started to really gain a strong interest in 
tuning frequency. And I remember one time sitting at my keyboard, turning it to 440 hertz. Actually, it was already set at 440 hertz. I remember turning it down to 432 hertz. And I started to play, and I thought to myself, you know, I started to feel like there's this feeling that just started to overtake me. Like, what is this? It's just... I just started to feel so good, and it was like, what is this feeling? I'm playing in this in this particular tuning frequency, but it's like something overcame me. Something just overtook my body. It just, it's like, what is this feeling? What's going on here, you know? And it just really made me feel good, and it was the most beautiful feeling in the world, you know? And so, for me, you know, if I were to have a favorite tuning frequency for me you know I, honestly i have two favorites i like the 440 hertz and i also like 432 hertz i like those two in particular because they both they both feel good you know they both feel really good you know and so that's the thing you know um everyone has their own you know favorite style of music everyone has their own you know way of you know how music how they think music should be tuned for them in particular, you know, because, you know, honestly, you know, as we all know, you know, to each his own, to each her own, you know, we all have our own, you know, we all have our own likes and dislikes, you know, it's just something that makes us, you know, unique. It's just something that makes us, you know, different, you know, as individuals, you know, and, and that's a beautiful thing, you know, and so, yeah, you know, that's, you know, we live in a world, we live in a weird world, you know, and, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to explain, you know, and, you know, it's, it's hard to explain all the kind, all, all different kinds of things that, you know, go on in the world, be it music, be it fashion, be it, you know, um, fads and things like that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, all kinds of things, you know, we live in a weird world where, you know, it's like, you know, we there's all kinds of there are all kinds of interesting things that you know that I'm just you know curious about you know it's just it, it's it's pretty interesting you know so yeah I just thought we'd come on and just talk to you guys about that you know just share what it is that I learned you know and just what it is I want to share with you and I hope you guys got something got something out of this you know and so. I hope you guys have an awesome day, awesome evening, you know, awesome afternoon, wherever you are in this beautiful, beautiful world of ours. You guys take care. I'm looking forward to sharing much more with you. Be on the lookout for much more. All right. So take care. Peace.